Welcome back everyone. In today's tutorial, I want to go over how to reduce your chances of getting rejected for noise or artifacts in your stock photos. This will be a relatively short video, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, so here we are in Lightroom and I have this image of my son. It's not the best image, you know, so ignore his messy face and whatnot. <laughs> Um, but this image was shot at 10,000 ISO, right? And if we zoom in, there's massive amounts of noise. Um, and this would not get accepted on any of the stock agencies that I know of. Um, so we have to find a way to reduce the noise or eliminate it. We can't eliminate it, so we have to find a way to reduce the noise. We can use expensive softwares like, you know, Topaz Denoise or DxO Pure Raw, but that's not necessary when we have a, a very good workaround. So all you need for this to work is a, you know, a photo processing software. I'm gonna use Photoshop. I'm gonna start in Lightroom, but I'm gonna jump over to Photoshop. Photoshop alone can do it or any other um, image processing software. The key is um, a lot of the agencies accept fairly small um, stock photos in terms of resolution. So Adobe stock will accept four megapixels, Shutterstock also four megapixels, Dreamstime three megapixels, and Pond5 I think two megapixels. So those sizes are incredibly small compared to what the cameras are putting out nowadays. Most of the cameras are putting out 24 megapixels, um, 20 megapixels. The R5 here is putting out 45 megapixels. So we have plenty of resolution to work with. All right, so let me get to what we're gonna do. Okay, so we're gonna first start off by processing the image in our style, how we would do it naturally. Um, so I have a preset here that I've developed, um, so I'm gonna apply that. And there's a few key ways to edit your image to not introduce more noise into the photo. I mean, we wanna reduce the noise, right? Um, so you really don't want to raise the, the shadows or um, the blacks too much. Um, even though this preset uh, did uh, raise that, but you can see the blacks are still somewhat crushed. And, and, and that's important because if, if we raised it too much, like there, look at all that noise we, we just introduced. That's, that's insane. But if we brought it back, if I undo, you can see it's not that bad, right? It's hidden by the darkness. Okay, so process the image how you normally would, and we're gonna apply a small amount of noise reduction. So for this image, I'm gonna apply like, I don't know, let's say 20. You don't wanna get too high because then the image will start looking plasticky. So 20 should do. And I'm also gonna increase the sharpness a little. And when you're applying the sharpness, you wanna make sure that your masking is, is set appropriately as not to introduce more noise into the image. So I'm holding down the Option key on a Mac. On Windows, it's the Alt key. So holding that down and moving the, the masking. You can see all the areas in white will have sharpness applied and everything in black won't have any sharpness. So we don't want any sharpness on, you know, the background. Um, so we just increase that until all the areas that we do want sharpen have white over it. So that looks good there at about 52. And this will, these numbers don't apply to any other image, it's just this particular photo. Um, so just play around with your image. All right, so that's looking good already. Um, yeah. So if we zoom in, we can see that's that's not bad. That's that's pretty good already. I'd have to say. And I'm just gonna 
you know, get rid of some of these real quick. All right, so that's good there. And then I'm gonna pr play around with the um, the white balance and stuff to, to make sure the image looks good overall. And when you're adjusting white balance, trying to get skin tone correct, you wanna not focus on the skin tone so much, but look at something that's relatively neutral. Um, so for example, you know, I'm adjusting the, the tint here. I can tell this is very magenta, um, that's very green. So I wanna find somewhere in between, right? To really get the skin tones correct. Um, that's looking a little bit magenta there. All right, so I mean, this is not so much about editing <laughs> the image as it is about removing the noise. All right, so once you have your, all of your editing done, you're gonna move it into Photoshop. So I'm gonna bring this image over into Photoshop. Um, All right, so now that we're in Photoshop, we can zoom in on the image again, and we can see there's still some noise here, right? So knowing that the stock agencies will accept images as small as four megapixels, anything over five will do, right? Um, we're gonna reduce this image significantly. Um, let's say we're gonna reduce it down to 10 megapixels maybe from 45 to 10 um, that should do and this isn't something you would do for every stock photo because it's way too time consuming right this is for something that you do for an image that you think would do fairly well or a couple of images that you think would do fairly well on the stock agencies but they they just have too much noise so I'm not saying shoot all of your images at you know 10,000 ISO and expect this to be a, a good workflow <laughs> because it's not you will quickly get burned out All right, we're gonna duplicate the background by pressing command J and We're gonna open this up in camera raw. Let's see filters Okay, and Once I'm here, I'm gonna apply a very heavy noise reduction on this um, All right, so that should do. Press OK. Right, I'm gonna hide that layer. Duplicate the background again. And if we turn that on and off, we can see the adjustments that we made. Uh, after have to zoom in real. So that's the on and that's the off, on, off. Okay, so now we're going to reduce the image size. So we're going to go to image, image size, and we're going to reduce this significantly. And we want to make sure um, where it says resample, um, we want to have that checked on, of course. And we want to do the bicubic sharper um, for reduction. And let's change this over to pixels. So it's currently that amount of pixels, 8,192 by 5,464. So let's reduce that a lot. Let's bring it down to, let's say, we know that that would be um, six megapixels, right? So two times three, um, let's do, So this is at least um, eight megapixels. Um, let's see how much it is to be exact. So 4,000 times 26, 68. And that's 10 megapixels. So that's exactly where we wanna be. All right, so we'll press okay. There's 
here's our 10 megapixel image. We zoom in at 100%. Oh, and just remember that the reviewers are reviewing your image at 100%. Not at 50%, not at 200%, 100%. So when you're doing all of your noise reduction and your final review at the, of the image, you want to do that at 100%. That's where it's going to be reviewed. So looking at this right now, this looks very good, I have to say, from where we started. Um, so if I turn off the layer that had the heavy noise reduction applied to it. Um, yeah, so I'm going to mask, put a mask on it and mask out certain areas. So like on, on the eyes and some of the hair. Okay, so we're going to paint and reduce the size. So we're on the mask layer and let's invert the mask so it doesn't apply to any other. Actually let's undo that. We'll just bring back the areas that we do want. And if we, if the entire mask is white and we paint in black, um, then we will remove the mask from those areas that are in black. And you can see it does bring some sharpness back to the eye. So if I disable the mask here, um, you can see. looking very good and let's merge so shift option command E will create a stamp visible layer on a PC that's shift alt um, control and E the letter E all right zoom in at 100% and that looks very good the last thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna apply some um, local sharpness to the eyes and perhaps the lips and a little bit on the nose to increase the perceived sharpness. So we're gonna go over to the sharpness tool. Normally we wouldn't do this because it is a destructive method, but we have backups. So just a little will do it. That's probably even too much. And you want to do this at 100%, by the way, zoomed in at 100% because that's where your images will be reviewed. Yeah, and that's that looks amazing from where we started. So, yep, I'm going to save that. And if we go back over to Lightroom, it should be there. There it is. So on the left is the original image with the preset applied and a little bit of noise reduction. Um, and on the right is the image that we just processed. And you can see, if you look in this area, there's a significant reduction in noise. And Look there, there's very much an increase in perceived sharpness. And look at this area, no noise, zero noise here. Um, so this would get accepted by the agencies any day. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I really like the results here. It's, it's a very good result. Um, 
there's zero noise and it's still a, a 10 megapixel image all right so that's pretty much it guys um, just remember that this technique should only be used if you know once again you have just a few images that you want to process that you think would do good on the stock agencies this is not a workflow that you would really want to employ for all of your stock images because it as you see it's it's a little time consuming um, if you had a hundred of these it would take you forever to process that um, so still photograph your images keeping in mind you want to reduce the amount amount of noise in your photos so you want to shoot in good lighting conditions um, or use flash if you have to but for those instances that you can't um, use flash and the light just isn't available don't be afraid to take the image because any image is better than not having the image <laughs> um, all right so if you found this helpful please subscribe to the channel you know ring that notification bell so you don't miss a video and you know like this video all right so until next time have a good one Thank you.